On this episode of the Infinite Loop Show, we talk about why the Apple logo was upside down. And more about mountain lion updates. Apple spaceships. And we're finally legal. Yes, it's episode 18, people, of the Infinite Loop Show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Infinite Loop Show, episode number 18. I'm Michael Gaines. And I'm Casey Coglin. Casey, I have a question for you. Yes. What's the legal drinking age in, um, in California? 21. <laughs> <laughs> but you're so legal to um, you know, do other things. Oh, I see. Okay. I was thinking drinking because <laughs> this episode is unofficially brought to you by Arrogant Bastard Ale. <laughs> We're both drinking the same thing. Let me let me warn people, this is bitter as hell, but once you mm-hmm. get used to it... The name is fitting for the beer. Yes, it is. And we like it very much. So, <laughs> we just... Well, I, it was your idea, because I had bought a six-pack of yes. this. And I'm like, oh, this is actually pretty good. And you said, do, we have, do you have any for the show? Because then I'll just go get some. Mm-hmm. And now we're both drinking the same thing. Yes, you're welcome, by the way. <laughs> Brewed down here in San Diego, because all the good things come from San Diego. Um, or I guess, Cupertino. Or Cupertino. Well, I think uh, next week... <laughs> One or the other. Next week may be the chocolate stout that uh, I really like. But as I was saying in the pre-show, that by the time I finish that bottle, I'm just like bleh, drooling and everything. Yeah, that's probably 10%. not a good beer to do show on. No, but it'll make a fun show. Mm, maybe mm. for another show. <laughs> maybe. Oh, maybe. That actually mm-hmm. may be a good idea. Mm-hmm. So I think I may well, be... I had it. Uh-huh. All right. <laughs> let's get to the news. What do you got for us? All right. So Bloomberg, everybody's favorite and probably, well, definitely way more trustworthy than uh, Digitimes and Apple rumors. <laughs> um says that Apple will most likely be debuting their new rumored lineup of laptops at WWDC, the the thin, sleek, Ethernet-less laptops. Ooh, snap. I still can't get over the lack of an Ethernet port, but... You know, I don't... I'll buy an adapter. The more I'm thinking about that, the more I think that it's probably not going to happen, because they could, even though, you know, you look at it and it's like... The Ethernet, the top of the port goes is exactly the width of the MacBook. They how could they go thinner mm-hmm. and and keep Ethernet? And that's where kind of the rumors started. Mm-hmm. But um, we have um, at work we have a lot of uh, HP uh, products, and one of them is the HP 13 inch Folio, mm-hmm. which is actually a little bit thinner than the MacBook Pro, and it still has Ethernet. I was thinking about this during the week after we did the last show. We were talking about the pros and cons of whether or not there's an Etherport, Etherport, mm-hmm. <laughs> Ethernet jack. And I was thinking that where I last worked, we didn't have wireless. Mm. And so, yes, you can buy the Thunderbolt Ethernet adapter, but it's an extra cost. Yeah. The and I'm Thunderbolt sure- one will most likely be close to like 50 bucks. A USB one will probably be like 30 bucks. Yeah. So. You know how IT is, because that's what you do. And every time a new piece of hardware comes in, it's always a big song and a dance about whether or not it's going to be supported officially and and all that. So, I don't know. I don't know if I can see the Ethernet port getting dropped. If they do, Um, they do. But I I personally don't like it. Yeah, no. I think a lot of people... It'll be one of those things where there'll definitely be... A uh, chunk of users who are like, "Well, I barely use it anyways. Mm-hmm. Big deal, and it's the way of the future." Like when they dropped floppy drives or what have you. Um, it's meant to be, but then there'll also be you know that wing of users who couldn't fathom. I mean, I think it's the same thing with the optical drive. People who can't fathom not having one yeah. on the machine at all times at their disposal. Um, I think it depends on the user. And it depends on how big a cojones Apple has to just say, look, it's done. We're moving forward. We pave the path for the future and everyone else follows. Yeah, so but that's as, the way it's going to be. As we know, 
not all companies have a wireless system. Like, yeah, it's great for the home, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think wireless is definitely more prevalent in the home. And even though we have um, a huge wireless system at work... You you do? Okay. We have have one that's an internal wireless network with uh, Kerberos um, authentication. Okay. And and that's everywhere across two buildings. And then we have various guest wireless points um, that are just web... Mm -hmm. uh, authentication okay and that's not doesn't give you internal access or anything so i mean anywhere you are in my company you can get wireless but still i think the most reliable is still going to be wired okay yep i agree we'll see it's uh, a couple weeks away three weeks yeah yeah um also in kind of related WWDC news, mm-hmm. uh, since they're most likely going to be debuting iOS 6, uh, there's quite a bit of rumors going around that iOS 6 is going to be dropping Google Maps in favor of um, a bunch of their new acquisitions. Mm-hmm. Um, Apple, well, end of last year and I believe beginning of this year, made it a few acquisitions of small map companies, one of which that makes really nice 3D maps. Mm -hmm. So a combination of these to give not only Apple its own, you know, internal mapping system so that they don't have to rely on Google Mm -hmm. and kind of get themselves out of that relationship. right? I'm sure they do pay licensing, but it sounds like with all the litigation and everything, they probably just don't want to be in bed with Google anymore. <laughs> um, so, yeah. But then if they also get super awesome 3D maps that blow Google Maps out of the water, then hey, everybody wins. Mm-hmm. And there is just one more thing. Look at what we've got. Incredible 3D maps. Right, exactly. Where's your Google Maps now, bitches? <laughs> no, this isn't a one more thing thing. No, that would be like one of the tent poles of iOS six, I think, if this was uh if this came to pass. Yeah. Sony is releasing Music Unlimited for iOS. It's gonna be released on Friday. We're recording this on Wednesday, and I'm I'm sort of interested in this. It's four dollars a month, all you can eat, all you can listen to. Yeah, and another one of those. Another one of those, and if there's any music that is not on their system, then you can upload it. I since I don't have it and I can't test yeah. it, I can't tell what. And like, you can get it for the PS3 and you can get it for the PS Vita. I have a PS3. Uh, I just really don't care. <laughs> is I, it already on those I, systems? You know, I think it is. And I then mean, the iOS is kind of just an afterthought. Yeah, iOS is Friday, and um, I, mm. I'm just not interested in using my PS3. This for music. is gonna. This I think is gonna be like their rental. Uh, yes. system for the PS3. How many people rent or buy movies on PS3? I don't know. Here's the thing about the PS3. I've written about this before. The PlayStation 3, it, it gets a lot of bad rap, but I love it for a bunch of reasons. Other than oh, yeah, the graphics and, and everything, single. you try playing an MP4 on an Xbox 360, and you get this error that says, I, I don't know what to do with this. You try running any kind of file on, on an Xbox 360, and it basically just poops on it and says, I don't know what this is. Yeah. The PlayStation 3, you throw a .vob file on there, bang, fires it up, 5.1, 7.1 audio, whatever you want, it fires it up. It's an amazing, amazing multimedia machine. Plays yeah. SACDs, and I know people are going, who cares about that? Well, I just bought... I have to get it here. I just bought a bunch of SACDs. These things, I'm telling you, if you have the equipment to play this stuff back on, here, Billy Joel, Piano Man, SACD. Now, admittedly, I play this on my Oppo. I don't play it on my PS3 anymore. But And I just dropped turnstiles. That was great. <laughs> but it, it's a good That's machine. That's going to sound great now. And so there are, some, <laughs> there are some people that I'm sure would love this. Because they use their PS3s as a multimedia machine. But right. for people like me that use it strictly as a game machine now, because I really don't use it as much of a multimedia machine as I did two years ago since I got the Oppo, for me, it's not going to be that big of a deal. Yeah, no. Receivers, um, a lot of home entertainment systems are you know, coming around finally. Because it takes receivers seem to take a long time to kind of catch up. Yeah. Um, and 
but they're coming around now. Some of them have AirPlay built in, mm-hmm. um, and the game systems. You know, they're gonna have to. They're gonna have to pull it out. And if there's not gonna be a PS4 this year, there's not gonna be a new. Well, there might be a new um, Xbox before there's a new PlayStation, but um, you know they need to update their stuff to kind of pull back in front of the crowd. I don't know. I, I didn't write this into our show notes because it's not Mac related at all. But on Kotaku, they mm-hmm. they reported that there was a temporary fi- a temporary website for the PlayStation Four. And but was, they keep and saying there isn't going to be one. There's been rumors of the Xbox with 720, but not, I yeah. mean, not even like there isn't even just no news about the PS4. There's news strictly from Sony saying, no, screw you guys. Like, stop asking <laughs> about it. We're not doing it this year. Oh, no, no, not this year. I'm sure it's not going to be this year. It's way, oh, okay. way too yeah, early. Yeah, so for if this you year. mean like. In general, if there ever is going to be a PS4, yeah. Yeah, oh, I'm sure there's going to be a PlayStation 4. Although, I, I really wish that uh, the PlayStation 3 had had taken off the same way the PS2 did. I mean, they're, they're still making games for the damn thing. I know, that's but ridiculous. We're, we're getting a little off topic here. But um, I don't know if I'm going to care about this Music Unlimited. If it has a 30-day trial, then maybe I'll give it maybe. a shot. But I already have iTunes Match. I already have Google music i i don't need this yeah i got spotify i mean there's audio in the world there's this is like one more like people aren't going to just for subscription services people don't bounce around Mm -hmm. normally you know you find one and you're paying a subscription you're not gonna just jump from one to the other they're gonna have to either pull something out that's like crazy awesome new functionality or some, you know, music that nobody else has. I don't right, know. Right. But they're going to have to pull something out of their ass to really make this. Yeah, because uh, who is this going to appeal to? PS3 owners and PS Vita owners. All three of I'm, them, the PS Vita right? owners. No, totally. I'm not hating on the PS3. Love it. But The Vita. Uh, the Vita. Mm, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, so, Kaspersky. Mm-hmm. Um, still, <laughs> still trying to you know just keep itself relevant, it seems, um, and keep its face in the news. Uh, was complaining this week about how Apple won't let them make an antivirus for iOS, so they're going to take <laughs> their ball and go home. <laughs> where, where are they going to bring the ball? <laughs> I don't know. Back to Russia or something. Why won't Apple let them? Okay, just. Listen to yourself for a second. It's antivirus. Well, I, I understand for iOS. That. I under oh for iOS. Oh, okay. For a second, I don't Problem. know what it is. You know what oh. it is? I, oh my god, the 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 Apple marketing machine is working on me, and I usually have that anti Mac Apple field. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know how Steve Jobs had the um, what was it? The reality yeah. distortion field. I have an anti reality distortion field. I was thinking for the Mac. And because oh, they, because they iOS and OS X is sort of merging a little bit. Shh, no, it's not. Okay, shh, it's not. It feels like it is. Shh, As a developer, it feels like it is. But anyway. I know, I know it anyway, is. Anyway, yeah, okay. So, <laughs> what is the antivirus for iOS? Yeah. You know, because the iOS is a totally... This walled garden... This is ridiculous. It's, it's just so <laughs> unsecure. Kapersky wants... <laughs> yeah. Well, they... they Clearly, iPhone owners, they need their help. Mm-hmm. We are just, we're just, you know, in a hotbed, and any day now, the viruses are going to just break through. <laughs> it's only a matter of time. And clearly, they're going to penetrate this simple operating system, and then it'll just be... Right, okay. I think what they'll do is maybe they'll release something under uh, a jailbroken oh, um, app. And yeah. sell some stuff that way. It sounds like Kaspersky doesn't understand iOS fully. No. Like maybe they they know Android and then just, you know, kind of draw conclusions. I'd like to know how, because as a developer, everything is inside its own little walled garden mm-hmm. with, with very little ability 
to work outside the box. So how are they going to sell an antivirus for iOS? I don't exactly. know how they would build That's one. That's the whole point. Why would, well, why would, I mean, if it's such a walled garden and it's so infuriating to, you know, people and everything, but that's also what makes it so secure. Mm -hmm. How? You can get into that argument. I know, I know. (laughs) Open versus secure. Open versus walled garden. (laughs) Yeah, that's Uh, pretty much it. Open versus secure. Hmm. Let me think. Uh, let me think about that. Hmm. When was the hmm. last time my iPhone crashed? Although I have been having some weird problems with my phone's volume since I updated to five one one, but it didn't happen immediately after I updated to five one one. My yeah. phone's main volume and its iTunes volume were always separate, uh-huh. and now now the phone is is using the the i iPod, I should say, like the the, the iPod uh-huh. volume. Uh-huh. As its main volume, and so I'm listening to music in the car, and I, I actually got a, a text message from you today, and so it's playing over Bluetooth, and it goes, beep, you know, it does my my uh, my text message noise, and the volume goes through the roof because <laughs> because the volume was set way low, and then yeah. when when the text message came in, it brought the volume back to what should have been the real volume, and it and it. It, it's screwed. I had to turn the volume down on the radio, and this has been happening for about four days now. That's weird. And I, can't I would restore it. Why. I think I'm going to do that. Yeah. See what happens, or just re- I'm going to reboot it and see what happens. Or um, that. Although it has been happening ever since I've been getting these warnings that my storage space is almost full, but I deleted a bunch of albums. I don't see how that could no, even I don't factor either. into the volume. No, 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 no. I don't think so either. I mean. I mean, you you and I both know how these things work. Volume should yeah. not have anything to do with the fact that. And if it does, then that's a whole another bucket of problems. I'm just saying that's the only weird thing that has happened to the phone at the same time. Mm. But no, the two of them should be completely mutually exclusive. Yeah, so, indeed. I don't know. Apple mm. Apple's Johnny Ive has said um. that. <laughs> The, the projects that he's working on now, which we know nothing about, are, are going to be his most important. He was knighted at Buckingham Palace recently, mm-hmm. and rightfully so, I must say. Yes. And he talked a bit about the stuff that he's working on that he can't say anything about. So there are obviously. He talked about the stuff he can't talk about? Well, meaning in the sense that he's designing things right now that are going to be coming out eventually, be it maybe at WWDC, uh, yeah. maybe in a year or two or five. We don't know. Yeah. But sure. there are obviously new things coming. And Apple's very tight lipped about what it is. I mean, for all we know, it could mm. be a brand new Apple TV, the, the, uh, the puck, yes. or it could be the 50 inch that you were TV. drooling over. Yes, the unicorn. <laughs> the unicorn TV? Well, Leo Laporte said it, and I think it's probably the most apt. It's uh, the the fabled Apple television set, which has become kind of the uh, the unicorn the- <laughs> product. The unicorn? Charlie! Charlie, look Apple- at my hooves! Look at my Apple TV! <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, I, I mean, he's he said he's been working uh, with the company since 91. Mm-hmm. Um he was put in a position as stated in the Steve Jobs biography where he's practically untouchable. Yeah. <laughs> and the company like and, and I think that Jobs he deserves it. Yeah. Second. Yeah. And so we're gonna have to see what his most important work is and it, it may take years for us to find out, but um Do you think this is I, just all hype, maybe? Well, I or don't do, know. Do you think he just like says this about everything, like how Steve kind of says everything's insanely great like every new product is the best product <laughs> but you see that's the apple marketing machine going I mean, you no, and I, I know and johnny yeah. is is just as good at you know pushing out that hype for stuff oh sure oh absolutely yeah i i totally agree with you i, I think that it may in fact be that yeah where there's always some insanely great slash awesome slash what you know whatever catchphrase of the week is right totally um but but that's apple marketing and you and i are immune to it 
Right. No, totally Aren't we? into it. Totally I totally don't want to buy whatever they're selling after the uh, keynote. <laughs> um, but hey, Elgato is announcing a new game capture HD program for the Mac. Very nice. This is uh, it's software for the Mac mm-hmm. that you can actually hook up your game system to and capture in HD 1080p uh, your game. Now, the video. this is huge because I know there are people that do game reviews and getting H- smooth HD video mm-hmm. into any computer, Mac or PC, for review right, purposes, be. is very difficult to do properly mm-hmm. because video cards are generally video out only. Mm-hmm. I think the only time that I've ever had a video in port on a card was years ago when I had an ATI and it had an S video in. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that was it. All the, the cards that I've ever owned since then have only been HD out, DVI, HDMI, only out. And so if you're trying to do a review and you're you want to pull in 1080p from an Xbox 360 or a PS3 or what have you via HDMI, you need a box because there's mm-hmm. no there's no HDMI input like on my Mac Pro. I would need something. What what's the yeah. port that it it um, brings everything in? Is it um, USB or let I don't me know, it's, see? It's too slow. I, I don't think it talked about a port at all because um, it is kind of um, like a small box device. It it's going to be going for. Uh, about 200 bucks and it's about a three inches to an inch by uh four inches yeah it doesn't say anything um, about what port i would capture think- da, da, da. yeah no it, it, i mean it talks about resolution and everything but nothing about um ports it shows a macbook air mm-hmm. so i'm thinking it's gotta use at least uh a thunderbolt or mini display as at least one of them. Yeah, it's possible because I'm thinking USB 2.0 may be too slow for that. Even if they no, did the compression yeah, in the box, that would box. be forever. Yeah, I don't know if that would work for smooth. So it'd have to. I would think um, on the Mac at least Thunderbolt or Mini Display Port, and then maybe like some other adapter or something for a PC. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you're doing game reviews, or for some reason you want to just maybe make YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. then I think that this is great. I, I want to do some more research on this because me personally, I don't always need to capture stuff from a game machine. Yeah. It, it's it's something that I wouldn't drop 200 bucks on unless I was doing something serious. Yeah, but there have been times years ago when I was doing um, uh, I was doing composite videos of, of um, like mashups and things like that and I was mm-hmm. pulling in video from, from different sources. Um. If I wanted to make an HD version, an, an updated HD version of that video, mm. then I would I would use that. Now, I, I kind of wonder, I mean, and again, it doesn't talk about ports on either end, but what the ports would be like on the other end. It would have to be HDMI because you can't HDMI. do it. With, you can't do 1080p with a component. So would you be able to use this for, I don't know, like TiVo or some sort of DVR recording? That's interesting because if you're going to do it with Blu-ray, in theory, in theory, it would work uh, simply yeah. because um, it would. Well, in order for Blu-ray to work, it has to talk to a an approved device, an HDMI device. I don't know if uh, gaming yeah, does the same thing. I know it does with Blu-ray, but I don't know if it does with, with gaming. So it may not, not work. So I don't yeah. know. That's, that's an interesting question because I don't know if this box advertises itself as a... Um, a no, but that could just be a kind of, you know, a thing like a bonus feature. Sure. It's one more thing. You know, they <laughs> didn't design it to do that, but maybe it will. Hmm. Yeah. At the Webby Awards the other day, uh, Steve Jobs was honored with a video. Did you watch this? I didn't. Oh, it's it's really good. It's Is basically it really nice? a bunch. It's it's a bunch of people. Uh, Bill Clinton, um, Bono from U two, of course, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, President Obama, and and some other people saying thank you to Steve Jobs for his inventions and everything like that. It was. Um, 
it was presented by the the two guys that did the I'm a Mac, I'm a PC oh, uh, commercials. Uh, oh my god! And now I know I, I can't remember their names. Both of their names. Um. Oh my Dude. god! How do I totally blank but, on both their we, names? Like we all know who they that. are. Yeah. yeah. Um. Why do I want to say Jonathan Colton? No, <laughs> it was a great tribute. Uh, it was a little short. I think they could have yeah. gotten more people. It seems to me like they hurried it, even though they mm-hmm. did get President Obama in there, and that's not easy to do. Yeah, he's kind of busy. Yeah, he's kind of busy. For him to sit down for even five minutes and do a video like that, plus you're going to have to probably use like the White House video crew in order to do it. Yeah. I'm sure they didn't send people from the Webby Awards to do that. But no, they it probably a- just... Yeah, it was a good tribute. I liked it. Um, oh well, I'll have to grab my box of tissues and watch it later. <laughs> no, it's not like that. It's, it's no, it'll be like that for, for me. For you, it doesn't. It doesn't mean that it is like uh, that. But I'll just be like, oh, it's so nice, and oh, he was so great. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Anyhow, something that doesn't make me cry. Uh, Mountain Lion, uh, an update, looks like it's including automatic ma- um, bleh, map, uh, Mac App Store <laughs> downloads. I can't even freaking talk anymore. And you haven't been drinking as much as I have. No, no. Which I means no you're lightweight. Uh, <laughs> Which makes me a cheap date. No, <laughs> give me the finger later. Um, I, I like this. Uh, you can turn this off, right? Because you know how I am. I, I only yeah. update when I have to because you know how, how sometimes apps are updated and they, they're crap. Yeah, yeah. I think this is part of that updated... What is it? The um, It's in system preferences. Not the file vault, but one of the security things yes. where they were complaining in the, in the beginning about like, oh, it, it only lets you... You know, as a security measure, it only lets you download from the Mac App Store, and you can't download from anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Um, but that could be turned off or turned down. You know, like the severity. I think this is the same thing, where um, not just for uh, security, but you can get automatic like background updates, which kind of. I mean, on one hand, it sounds great, awesome, one less thing I have to uh, think about. But at sure. the same time. This is exactly what <laughs> everyone complains about in Windows. When it starts oh, doing yeah. an update and then it's like, hey, we're going to restart now because we've been updating the background and now it's time for a restart. Oh, hey, I hate that. oh you're restarting. Hey. Well, well, wait a minute. Is this for apps or is this for the operating system? Uh, it's for apps. Okay. So or it could it be for the operating like system. Operating, yeah, I mean, if they can do it for one, it would be even easier, I would think, to do it for the operating system because that's like straight to their servers. Sure. They don't have to go through like a store or some kind of third party, <laughs> or not third party, but middleman. I used to do that at work. There was, a, you know, we had a system, that whatever that system is, where uh, Windows 7, I'm, I'm sorry, not Windows 7, Windows XP updates were pushed to our machines. I'd be in the middle of work and doing something really mm. important and then, oh, we have to reboot. Now cancel. And then it'll if you press cancel, maybe it'll shut itself down for like half an hour and then it'll come back. Yeah, and the more you hit cancel, on. the faster it comes. So I found this registry hack that allows you to shut it off at least for the day or something <laughs> like that. So I would do that. And it drove me crazy because... It I- drives everyone crazy because it's like if you have a screen full of windows... That thing is either down in the corner or it's behind a window, so you don't see it. Yeah. And then the warning time goes up, and all of a sudden, your machine's rebooting, windows are closing, you can't stop it. And <laughs> I've been, I was on a, doing an online test one time for school, oh, and that happened. No. And it was like right at the time limit, like right at midnight, and the test, you know, was going to close, and I couldn't finish in time because my system started rebooting, and oh my god! So what did you do? What happened? Um, I I had to email the teacher and saying like, look, I'm sorry, like I was, you know, I ran out of time, my system rebooted, and this and this and this, and I mean, I, I passed, that. but uh, it was the worst. Well, of course you did. 
in the oh my god why didn't they do this sooner category yes indeed she, man, TiVo is finally planning to stream to iOS devices this summer this is something that should have happened at least two years ago or, or yeah. maybe a year ago maybe a year ago but this is long overdue and I have a TiVo premiere which mm-hmm. I I, I can't. It's one of those things that I can't live without. Can't live yeah, without now, my Tivo. I could have sworn. I mean, there's already, or no, I'm thinking of Slingbox. I think Slingbox and Slingbox has the app and they stream and everything, but not TiVo, right? Right, TiVo. Okay. TiVo has an I'm app that allows you to control it and talk to it from the iPad. Mm-hmm. And oh, let me tell you something. Remote. You want to talk about an elegant app? That's one. Is it? Oh, it's gorgeous. It because better be because you're paying for TiVo. <laughs> like TiVo owners, TiVo isn't cheap, you know? No, TiVo is not cheap. You get what you pay for, though. And, yeah, yeah. and I'm really surprised that after all these years at TiVo, like everyone and their mother doesn't have a TiVo. But Well, because you can get a cheaper knockoff version yeah, for free from your, from uh, your com- yeah, uh, provider. From your provider. And, and they suck, which is why I won't, yeah, no, they're- I won't ever use anything other than a TiVo. But... I've always wanted the ability to watch something downstairs while my family is upstairs watching something else. And and now it looks like you're going to be able to do that. You'll be able to stream whatever is on your and TV. And we'll won't change the iOS. channel or anything? No, it's because it's just it, there's an internet one jack thing on that, it. That's one thing that Slingbox does. If somebody's watching it on the TV and then somebody tunes in on the computer or on the iOS app and changes the channel, it changes the channel for the person watching the TV, oh, too. Oh, no. No, it doesn't do that. Um, if it's streamed... I'm sorry. If it's saved on the hard drive while oh, okay. one person is watching something upstairs, even if they're watching a recording upstairs, it'll stream over Ethernet mm-hmm. to your iOS device. So and is this only going to be recorded stuff that you can stream, not like live TV or anything like that? I, yes, and, and which is fine. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I really don't care. I, I'll be, I would totally happy with that because yeah. of what I just said. Sometimes I just want to watch stuff downstairs. And because there are days, people with families will understand this. Sometimes there are days when the family, uh, the other members of the family are just stuck watching, I don't know, whatever they're watching up there, America's Next Top Model or whatever crap there is. And, <laughs> They're watching a string of stuff, and you just want to watch Doctor Who or something like that. And you, just, mm-hmm. and you know what? Yeah. See, Doctor Who is actually a bad example because you can stream over Netflix. Yeah, um, right. It's going to have to be something that you can't get on Netflix right. or But there are else. things, but you may not have a Netflix account, and there may be things that are on your TV that are not on Netflix. For example, I'll give, I'll give you a good example. I have um, Rod Roddenberry's uh, Trek Nation documentary. Oh, on my okay. TiVo. What if I I, I want to watch that while they're upstairs watching something? I can do that. Love well, it. hallelujah. Hallelujah. Finally. finally. Um, speaking of The Good Doctor, uh-huh. there's a new app that is virtually time travel. Mm. Tell me about um, this because I didn't, I didn't click on this. So this app is... I, I, and I failed so much because i don't know if it's out yet i think i'm pretty sure it's out um but i didn't download it oh look at at this um so it's a augmented reality app called Uh what was there um all together and it uses the camera to show whatever you're looking at Mm -hmm. there's an overlay kind of like a 50 percent opacity overlay of old um like historical pictures and renderings of what was actually there at that geolocation that you're looking at and it overlays over what you're looking at so if you're looking at say you know the san diego convention center or something Mm -hmm. you'll get this old-timey overlay that shows what was there years ago uh, 50 100 years ago um you know probably nothing Mm -hmm. um but uh, yeah, they show on uh, Cultimac and the the review pictures of like horse drawn carriages and everything you know on the street that you're actually on. It looks amazing. It looks really well done, and it looks really exciting. And just another like really good example and kind of step forward in augmented reality. 
You know what I'm thinking as you're talking about this is the Google car that goes around taking pictures of, of areas mm. around the country yeah. and around the world. That's going to become like this. This That is going to be, That's yeah. That's what it, yeah. There's going to be an ability, it's going to be years from now, but there's going to be an ability for you to look at the progression of a street, an area over yeah. time. People yeah, are, kids everything's, are gonna, everything's so much more well documented now with social media and having a camera in your phone with you all the time people are taking pictures everything is documented a hundred times over mm -hmm. and kids are going to be able to use this for historical purposes 100 years from now but yeah mm -hmm. this, this is just great stuff there is a story about why the apple logo was upside down on the early uh early machines and I have to say, I always wondered what the hell Apple was thinking when they did this. For those of you that don't know that or may not remember, when you bought a Mac, like, for example, the PowerBook G4. Yeah, the old PowerBooks. God, I love the machine. The titanium. So <laughs> you, would, you would have it facing towards you. And when mm -hmm. it's facing towards you, that's when the Apple logo was in its proper orientation. But when you opened it, it would show to everybody with the lid open that the, the logo upside was upside down. down. Mm -hmm. The reason why they did, well, I shouldn't say they. This was Steve's decision. And the reason why he made this decision is because he didn't want people getting confused as to which end to open their, their laptops on. And so if the logo was facing them, then they knew that they were doing it right. Mm -hmm. But as the article says, that's a one or two second thing where you just go, oh, it's the other side. And then you just yeah. flip it, and, and then you know from that point forward. Whereas after you you uh, you make this mold on all these laptops, that's permanent. Well, so, even more so than that, but people, um, it's a two second, you know, impression that yep. yeah, people self correct and they they move their laptop and they open it correctly. Mm -hmm. But the impression that you leave. For, say, somebody sitting there with their laptop open for two to three hours working on it. The, somebody else, people walking by, people onlookers looking at the laptop with an upside-down logo is a impression that lasts much longer. Yes. And I'm sure at some point somebody either pointed it out to Steve or he went somewhere and saw somebody using a laptop, a MacBook Pro or, or maybe a PowerBook or something where the logo was upside-down and he just probably realized that he made a mistake. Yeah, and this is also back, I mean, the the old PowerBook days, you know, the black PowerBook, this was when laptops weren't, there weren't that many laptops out. Right. You know, desktops were still kind of king, mm -hmm. and not that many people had laptops. They weren't everywhere like they are today. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's damn good that they corrected that. So now today, when you look at, say, like, a college forum classroom <laughs> and it's over 50% max apples staring back at you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's free advertising right there. Did you, did you ever see the picture? I don't know where it was taken, but it was an entire yeah. classroom, a lecture hall filled with max. And there was like one guy with a Dell. And that's, that's something. how it is now yeah. when I was going to UCSD and now when I'm going again, that it's completely like that. Mm -hmm. It's, a like virtually everyone has a has a laptop an opening class and it's about 80 and of those it's about 80 percent apple yeah yeah so yeah. um next up why siri is a threat to business this is an interesting article yes ibm um they claim to have warned us and now uh I don't know. We're going to uh, regret it or reap horrors. No. But in any I, case, <laughs> IBM, in their own workplace, has banned Siri for uh, for this reason that because Siri is so um, so easy to activate mm -hmm. um, and so good at kind of transcribing and figuring out what you've said and recording it and and writing it down. Uh, IBM is really concerned that Siri will, or a person, you know, with a Siri-enabled device would accidentally uh, record or take down 
you know, sensitive information. Yeah. This article says that um, IBM is very strict about their BYOD program, um, Bring Your Own Device. They mm-hmm. encourage it, <laughs> but then they Which say Which is that, even sillier. Well, what happens is that if you're fired or if you just leave the company, your device has to be wiped. Well, yeah, that's how it is at my company. Yeah, but... I mean, we I, issue you phones and laptops, but then when you leave, we get those back. They're oh, not yours. Oh, sure, but you can back up all the data on it onto your local hard drive at home and then just put it on a different device. Yeah, you could. Right? So, it seems a little silly. I'm, no, not silly. And If you're going to give the device... Well, if it's BYOD, if it's bring your own device, it's your device. Right. So, with that thing, I mean, like, when... Like, in our environment, when people bring their own personal phones or tablets, uh, we allow them to, depending on who it is, we allow them to connect to our wireless, and we allow them to put on their Exchange email. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, an exchange we can wipe from the exchange server whenever we want, just the email and calendar and contact information. Okay. Well, that makes so, sense. So, I mean, that, that you don't have to, like, take the device and do a full wipe and restore. We can just, you know, put in a call from the server for the next time that device goes to ping the server, it self-destructs. <laughs> <laughs> this device will self-destruct in five seconds. And you know what? Now that's real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, yeah. let's move on to our rapid fire. <laughs> I got to fix this audio. Mm. All right. Uh, you got the first rapid fire. Let's go, Casey. All right. In an attempt to make their next big project as controversy free as possible okay apple has sent out a letter to its neighbors about their new spaceship-esque campus two uh this is the the new campus that is they're planning to build on the hp land that steve bought years ago and it's a big oval type of building that looks (laughs) like a spaceship Uh, neighbors would learn all about the construction and design of the new mothership and then be able to comment and ask questions via an enclosed self-addressed postcard. That's actually pretty cool. There's a rumor going around that Microsoft's office for iOS, which we talked about a little while ago, uh, maybe like in episode one or two, it was early. Uh, it's going to come out in November. That's the current rumor. I think this is actually good. Say what you want about Microsoft and office and everything, but it is a necessity in some places. And so, Uh, yeah. If you want people to keep their iOS devices and not have them buy, I don't know, some Android device, this is a great way to do that. So it looks like mm-hmm. uh, we're going to get it in November. Yay. Um, the Playa, Playa, I want to call it Playa. Um, <laughs> the Playa iPhone case is built with a slide out panel that reveals a pocket to keep, well, they suggest condoms. Uh, <laughs> Yes, it's an iPhone case with a hidden back compartment, and the back slides out to kind of reveal that compartment. I think this case would be just fantastic and practical for carrying, like, money, credit cards, you know, whatever. I I would put this to good use. And for only 30 bucks, I would probably get one. Mm-hmm. Um, the only problem is it has the name Playa plastered all over the back. <laughs> Jeez. So... I'm not going to get that. iOS developers are not concerned with the fact that there may be a four-inch screen on the new iPhone 5, or the new <gasps> iPhone, we should call it, because we don't know if it's going to be called the iPhone 5. The no. they're, they're talking about the fact that the device, the device's screen may be 1136 by 640. It's already 640 pixels wide, but it's currently mm-hmm. 960 pixels tall. So the way that I see it is that in order for Apple to make everybody happy, is that if you're going to have what I would consider to be a quote-unquote legacy app that hasn't been updated for the new device's screen, it would probably show it dead center with black on the top and black on the bottom. Right. Or or some background or something. Or maybe just all on the top or like shift to the top or shift to the bottom. Either way, the, the point being is that that's Apple's way of not forcing people to have to redo their app and and uh, re-upload it for the new device. So I think this is good. 
Uh, yeah, it makes everybody happy. You get a bigger screen, the the fabled four inch screen, and uh, old stuff still works. Mm-hmm. And it'll be uh, sixteen by nine if the rumor holds true. Awesome. Yep. Uh, want to know which iOS apps are accessing your personal data? The new app Clueful will tell you pretty much everything. Uh, listing currently installed apps on your iOS device, Clueful gives detail gives a detailed list of what exactly each app has access to. Tracking usage metrics, accessing your address book, accessing photos or GPS, or tracking your location data. Clueful will tell you everything in a nice, neat little interface. Cool. Uh, I don't know if he's a blogger or or who is he, but uh, someone named Ken Schrift decided to take apart an iPhone charger to take a look at what's inside it and what differentiates it from the crappy charges that you can buy. Hmm. And it turns out that it's built really well. They oh, compact- that's weird. Apple building stuff really <laughs> well? That's that's unheard of. What separates it from all the crappy chargers is the fact that it has um, overheating sensors built in and just all the components are put together in such a way where it suggests that the whole thing is optimized better than the crap junk that you get out there for five bucks so you get what you pay for and people are always crapping all over apple for the fact that their stuff is overpriced but Mm -hmm. in this case this is probably the technology that prevents it from overheating prevents it from catching fire and 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 such so i think this is good i I think it's a good yeah and it's all in a pretty neat design little case what more can you ask for sure uh, Mountain Lion adding offline reading list mode to Safari and dictation Ooh. to the Mac. Ooh. Now, these uh, these abilities, the Mac voice commands and the ability for Mac to dictate to the user has been built in for a lot of iOS versions, um, but they're generally very clumsy, hard to use, and usually don't ever work as intended, <laughs> especially when you want to show off to your friends that you can tell your Mac to do something, and then it totally doesn't. Um, but 9 to 5 Mac reports that the voice features will be much bigger and better part of the new OS. Nice. And this makes a lot of sense since they're, um, you know, series uh, built into everything, or at least for the new iPad um, dictation on a keyboard is. So there wouldn't be that much of a stretch to put this into Mountain Lion. Mm -hmm. Which actually brings me to my next point. We're going to move on to culture now. Um, I was thinking about this from, I forgot where I read the article, but it was a way to make your, your Mac Lion desktop look like an iOS device. And it seems mm-hmm. to me like we're moving towards an entire touch and gesture based system, whether we like it or not. And yeah. there, are, there are systems out there, for example, the Kinect for Xbox, uh, mm-hmm. Xbox 360, where you can use gestures uh, to uh, t- gestures in voice to talk to your system and to swipe things to one direction or the other. They're very nice if you don't look like an idiot doing so. <laughs> They're very limited, too. Yes, they are very limited. Although, they did release uh, Connect um, API 1.5. Yeah, so you can build on that should you be mm-hmm. so inclined. And they've got facial recognition now. So, mm-hmm. uh, the facial recognition, I do not believe, is built into the latest version of the Xbox 360. But you can stick your tongue at your, th- at your 360 and say, no, I really don't like this. Or I'll give a whole other thumbs down. <laughs> thumbs down, or I'll give a, a whole other <laughs> like uh, look at licking the screen, mm. something like that. But but my point is is that I have this feeling that at some point, either MacBook Pros or iMacs are going to have a touch screen on them built in, mm. and. I'm wondering if this is what we're moving towards, and if this is what people actually want. Because for me, we've uh, me and and Eric Rice. I mean, we we tested this. Like, how long can you actually go? If you're someone like me, you spend a lot of time developing on the on your computer yeah. and everything. If you're really not in shape, and I really should be, but how long can you? St- can you do these gestures before you start getting shoulder fatigue and elbow fatigue? And and that leads into other things mm. like bursitis and things like that. I had bursitis mm-hmm. once. I don't know why I got it, 
But I wound up just getting bursitis one day, and my elbow swelled up like a softball. You just decided to get it one day, and no, there one it day was. I was at the movie. It was my fortieth birthday, as a matter of fact, and I'm at the movies, and all of a sudden, like my elbow doesn't feel right. My point being is that using a connect obviously didn't cause that, but it could if you use yeah. it too much. You get muscle strain and sp- and spasms and things like that, and so. Are these companies that are pushing us towards these gesture-based systems and, and, and touch screens, are they doing the right thing ergonomically or do they just not care and they just want to move us into some new technology because they think it's cool? Yes and no. I think stuff like the Connect and the Wii, they're they're trying to do something different. You know, mm-hmm. They're trying to do the, the fitness thing and that was the whole kind of um, movement there with so you're not just plopped down on the couch with a controller barely moving becoming just like a, a blob mm-hmm. you're you're getting up and you're moving around and you're being more active so what could be bad about that right we're helping um, but then yeah I think in excess really I mean anything mm-hmm. is not good in excess um, but uh, even more so for like the smaller, like your laptop or a desktop, the the touch um, interface and gestures. Um, I could even see the Magic Trackpad. As much as I love it, mm-hmm. you know, if you're sure you're not moving your whole arm like you are a mouse or anything. And I actually m- made this point to quite a few people that it's actually better because you you keep pretty much everything still and you're just moving your hand like this. Sure, but then. That's carpal tunnel, right? Yeah. So, I mean, again, in excess, nothing's good for us. Well, I don't think that being moved to kind of this gesture-based minority report society <laughs> is is horrible, but... It's not horrible, but look, I have my desk set up pretty ergonomically, and I have never had mm-hmm. carpal tunnel. And I don't think the bursitis I got was actually from the way that I work. I, th- I think I might have like banged my elbow or something like that. I really don't know. My point is, is that I've never had a problem with the way that I work. However, mm-hmm. I do see limitations in the devices that we have. For example, if you're working on a 3D object and you want to rotate it, um, oh, who is it? Is it Griffin? Some, there's some company that makes a knob. It's, it's, yes. it's all it is, a USB um, knob. And, and you can use that to turn an yeah. object you know, left or right. Yeah. You can't really do that with a mouse because all mm-hmm. a mouse does is track in two dimensions, um, mm-hmm. horizontally and vertically. You want to rotate along that, that same horizontal plane, but you can't with a mouse because it's not designed to do that. So if you can use your hand, you can do that. Now, the problem yeah. with that is the sensitivity of the sensor and how well it tracks your hand because... Your intention yeah, exactly. may be to turn something just a little slightly, bit. but what if you really do want to move it down a pixel or two or a millimeter or something like that? The The systems are really not designed for these sort of human mistakes in, right. this, in, in yeah. the sense of how we're moving. So if you're turning something, I'm doing this on video if you're watching the video, if you're, if you're turning something to the right and then you say, you know, I really want to move it down. Well, how does the computer know the difference between you actually wanting to move it down and the fact that maybe your hand or your arm is under fatigue and you're starting to drop yeah, your arm Yeah, I was just going to say, what, more importantly, what if you do it by accident? Yeah. What if, like, you're turning and you don't realize, like, when you're turning, you, like, move your whole hand. Right. You know, when all you wanted to do was turn, but you didn't realize, like, it's also moving down. And so... And- Right. So what I'm thinking is that these these virtual uh, touchscreen and gesture-based systems, they're good for mm-hmm. maybe uh, large movements. Like you want to just turn something 45 degrees, but then if you want to do finer controls, then I think we're going to have to start using actual peripherals. Yeah. And, and so like gloves. Like Minority gloves. Report. As far as the iPad goes, we're starting to use touch for all our interfaces. There's no mouse. Uh, for the iPad officially. And so do we need that for the iPad? Well, some people may argue that you do for, for example, um, I would love to have a Wacom tablet for, for doing all the, um, um, 
for the artwork. Yeah. Because right now you got to, I mean, the, the system that's on the iPad, you have to use one of those, um, what are those? Oh, I forgot the type. Stylus. Of the, the sty- yeah, the stylus, but the, the type. Um, not conductive. What the hell is the name of it? I can't remember. Capacitive. The capacitive, yes. Thank you very much. The capacitive styli, which are not very accurate. No, yeah, they most of them have a very squishy head, and it's very hard to get uh, fine lines and detail in, mm-hmm. or even just kind of control. Right. Um, a lot of the times, it just kind of squishes any way it feels like, and uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so for most of my fine art and, and detail work, I have to do on the desktop with my Wacom tablet. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just a must. We just like to know what everybody listening thinks. Are we moving away from peripherals other than the keyboard? I can't see us moving away from the keyboard. Or are peripherals always going to be king? All right, let's move on to stuff that Casey wants. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like I'm playing Gran Turismo 5. It the kind of does, system? right? The, no, it, totally. That's what I was thinking when you're selecting your car. I know. Um, it's like, hey, I'm in my garage. I think I'll play with my Ferrari today. And my saxophone. <laughs> all right, um, what is it that you want today? All right, so I just saw this watch, and I used to think the Pebble watch was pretty cool, but mm-hmm. I was like, oh, you know, I could just get a, a iPod Nano watch. Right. Um, you know, why would I get... I mean, the Pebble, wa- Pebble watch is nice, and meh, you know, whatever. Um, I saw this Meta watch today. Mm-hmm. Um. Now I get the company name is MetaWatch, and or unless I'm mistaken, the yeah, watch I think it's MetaWatch. Meta yeah. and it's made by MetaWatch. Um, the, it's actually designed uh, by people from Fossil and one other watch manufacturer. It's it's like a direct competitor to the Pebble Watch. Mm-hmm. It's kind of you know an oblong um, rectangle shape screen. It's got Bluetooth built in, it's got an accelerometer, it's got uh, vibrations, um, all this stuff built in. It connects to your your phone or your iPod Touch or your Android, your iPhone. Uh, it gets your email, your Facebook updates, your weather, uh, phone calls, messages. Oh, and it tells time, too. Wow. Wow. Um, <laughs> All of this, and it tells everything like on the screen in kind of like a nice little eight bit <laughs> display. Like, like a I Dick like Dick Tracy interface. It is. It is. It's like you can see everything kind of at a glance, and I hate to say it, almost like the Windows Phone Seven interface. Snap. I know where you get everything kind of at a glance. You know, you get all the information. You don't have to, like, flick through screens or drill down or anything. Um, and it's all kind of 8-bit looking. It's uh, black and white. It's it's nice. Here's the thing about it that irks me a little bit is that it's $200. And for that much money, you can buy an iPhone 4S, which does all that. Well, a new one, for like, with contract, if you're, you know, up on your contract. You're not going to wear your iPhone 4S on your wrist. I, no. Yeah. But, and I, I mean, it's a freaking watch. I, I realize that. I'm just saying that for and that really, much money. Like, it, doesn't, it doesn't seem like that much. Um, the watches I've bought, this watch, it was more than 200 bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, and watches I've gotten in the past have been around there or, you know, over 100 for sure. The Pebble one was about, what, 100 to 200, depending on which one you got. The iPod not Nano watch is, you know, 150 plus the strap. Yeah. So, um, I mean, there are definitely more expensive watches out there. Um, That's A true. lot more expensive. That's this true. is, for a watch with this kind of technology and... This kind of design, it's really not that expensive. I haven't worn a watch in years. I don't miss it because I'm always surrounded by something that tells me time, be it my phone, my computer. I don't need to wear it, and I'm not a very big jewelry guy. So yeah, it's just not for me. All right, we're going to move on to apps. <laughs> this sounds like Gran Turismo 5 also, doesn't it? We need Is that to the same music? Some- no, it's different music. Totally sounds now, like here, I'll the, play the other music. This, this is actually pretty funny. We've been using this music for a while. I just realized it sounds like Gran Turismo. Here's the other one. 
That oh, sounds it is more. It, it's different, but yeah, it does. Yeah, that sounds more like Gran Turismo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about. Well, I think we need to pick out new music before next week. Indeed. All right. The app that I'm talking about this week is called Feeder for Mac OS X. This is what I used. I've been using it for years. Um, I've been using it since I started doing World years. of Warcast. Yes. I, uh, back in 2005, I needed an app that would allow me to create my RSS feed for my podcasts. Because doing it by hand, oh, forget it. It was terrible. And those first two or three episodes where I'm just sitting there like yeah. coding XML by hand. Oh, you don't want to do that all the time? Oh, no. I couldn't stand it anymore. So I was looking for an app, and I, I came across this app called Feeder. And I've been using it ever since. And uh, it's well worth the money and allows you to do so many different things. And it's well built. Like what? Well, let me tell you. You can actually create a library of different podcasts, all of them. Um, one of the nicest things that I have, and, and they finally got this working correctly in the latest version because it didn't work before. The easiest way for me to create a new podcast is for me to duplicate last week's and then edit the new one. Mm -hmm. So that way I don't have to create a new one from scratch or have to type the episode mm -hmm. you know, and, and do all the, like the, the email yeah, address right. and the URL and all that stuff. All I have to do is duplicate it. I change the title, I change the number on the podcast, and I change the description. And I have to manually put in the time, like an hour, seven minutes, 42 seconds, or something like that. Done. And um, it allows you to talk to your servers. You can do it over FTP if you want, SFTP. Mm. Uh, it'll actually, I believe it'll actually take a new podcast and submit it to Apple for you. And you know, do it's, it's all a, the legwork. Yeah, it does all the legwork. You can edit different podcast rss uh fields depending on what kind of podcast you're you're creating if you're doing something for itunes you can put in your itunes fields if you're doing just straight rss you can do that kind of thing nice. and I, I i can't suggest this app enough so feeder for mac os 10 is mine awesome my app is a little app that i got a few weeks ago but it just saved my ass <laughs> end of last week um, I just recently put a new hard drive in my MacBook Pro, mm -hmm. uh, fat 750 gig um, Seagate hybrid drive, um, hybrid SSD and traditional spinning disk drive. Mm -hmm. um, and then like the next day or two days later, I'm getting, uh, now I went up from 500 gigs to 750 and literally like the next day I'm getting out of um space errors on my mac mm -hmm. saying that i'm i'm low on disk space that you know it's almost full and i'm like wait i should have way <laughs> too much room i should have a ridiculous amount of room um and i couldn't tell what was blowing up my hard drive what was taking up all the space i had no idea everything looked fine everything looked like my old files there was nothing obvious in any of my folders so disk art um, is a nice little app that gives you literally a graphical re representation of your hard disk mm -hmm. or you can have it scan um, USB drives or external hard drives it scans whatever drive you want and then it will kind of bring up like a colored graph with you know, different size squares and colors for what's taken up all the space. Mm -hmm. So say like you've got a big blue square for apps and then like a little yellow square for system, you know, or something like that. And then you can kind of drill down into each of those squares and, and see what its subfolders are and subdirectories and keep drilling down and drilling down. Um, but it gives you like a really nice quick... Um, like view of of what is taking up all the space mm -hmm. and then you can also on the side and this is the important part <laughs> there's a little delete box on the side so you can drag any of those colored boxes to over to the delete box and it'll get rid of whatever that is that's sweet so i was able to drill down see that there were three like two uh, over 200 gig sql wow. files on my hard drive. Do you know why and that happened? I think it's they were from SQL Developer, oh. um, a program I just started using to write um, Oracle SQL code. 
Um, I don't know why I created those files um, because I was using SQL Developer on my old hard drive and it never did. Mm -hmm. But that's the only SQL related thing I have. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. But it ha I haven't had that problem since. But it, you know, it was really nice to uh, be able to do that and quickly and kind of resurrect 600 gigs for my hard drive. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right, I think that's it for this show, is it not? We're already done? We're already done. We had so much damn fun. I know, there's so much news. Talking about Max. <laughs> it was an interesting news week, but... It'll be way more interesting in, what, two, three weeks? Two, three weeks. Mm -hmm. When we're at WWDC, we'll see what happens. Yes, All indeed. Right. If you want to contact us, I am at Star Mike on Twitter. Casey is Casey Caso, K A C E Y K A S O. I finally got that right. Rolls off the tongue. You can also Just follow like. us on Infinite Loop TV on Twitter. You can send us email, the Infinite Loop Show at gmail.com. And of course, we're the Infinite Loop Show dot com. We want to thank everybody for listening and watching, and we will talk to you next week bye everybody bye what do you like max <laughs> bye <laughs> <laughs>